why is it that we don't give the family doc pay the family doctor more than the specialist, right? And uh, and it's a typical inverted pyramid in even the way we pay folks. I talk about the disease in our 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 economic system being a fraud, and and even in the healthcare industry, it works out that way. Let me show you this: a kidney specialist makes a lot more money than the family practitioner. I want you to think about this well. A kidney specialist makes a lot more than the family practitioner. But who actually does the most work? Who actually is more beneficial to society at large? Yes, we like specialists, somebody who can sit and spend all of their times studying all the ins and outs of a kidney, but it's one thing, right? But you have the family doctor that when that patient comes in, he has to look at the patient in, in the aggregate in a holistic manner. He has to figure, does this need to be sent to the person who knows the kidney or does this need to be sent to the person who knows the heart or does this need to be sent to the person who knows the intestine? He has to be not only a traffic cop, but he has to have great deductive skills, etc. And as he part he or she participates in the medical field more and more years, he gains the experience, she gains the experience of knowing where or what ails the body bef you know, before they have to go ahead and send to a specialist whose concentration is going to be that one organ, that one disease, that one thing. But in our inverted way of thinking, they say, well, the specialist had to go and get some more training for that one thing. But you know what? The, the family practitioner, that doctor that sees everybody, is in practice to understand everything continuously. But again, in our thinking process, we somehow value that person that only has to worry about that one organ as opposed to that person that has to be holistic. The same thing we have in industry, right? The person who moves the capital, the dollars, make all the money in our society. But then that person who does the work uh, is subservient to the person who has the capital. And then we say the person with the capital re risk their capital without taking into account that the person that goes into work every day risks themselves at tr during transporting themselves to work, risks themselves for the environment in the work, uh, both psychological and, and physical. I mean, we are a society that has been taught, we have been taught to minimize those who work the most and maximize those who work the least. You doubt it when somebody says, I am smart because I make my money work for me. Well, guess what, people? Money works for no one. We simply have a society where those who have money, we can sit it down and have others do the work. You know, there's a time we used to call that slavery, right? So, I mean, we have a, a mode. We have been taught a certain modal, a certain way of thinking where we minimize those who are worth the most and maximize those who perform the least. And it's the same in our healthcare system. We spend the most in the healthcare system in America, the most more than anyone else. Yet we are so, our outcomes are terrible compared to the rest of the world who actually see the humanity in having universal health care. And unfortunately, the, the, the cancer, the disease that we have in the for-profit system is starting to infiltrate even some of these systems, degrading them. The national health care system from uh, England, from the, from the United Kingdom, one of the best in the world. As soon as it started to off, uh, to off, off shoot some of its services to the private sector. It has started some degradation because, again, what it has done, what, what certain parts of the NHS is doing, and I've covered that before on other shows, is to move it to the private sector where profit is the motive. Look, I have nothing against profit at all. I've had seven, eight businesses before, but 
the one thing we have to acknowledge that there are certain things that don't belong in the profit domain. There are certain areas where profit is a hindrance. Profit is an expense. Profit has us making the wrong decisions. If we, if, if we use profit in the healthcare domain, we cannot believe that, we, that, that any entity is going to put that person's well-being, that person's health, that maybe that person needs a heart transplant, but we can't do it because it'll hit the bottom line, but we can prop them up with some sort of medicine to keep the cost low. I mean, we have to start thinking humanely. We have to start thinking of our well-being. We have to start thinking about people first. Business is there to make people first. Business should be there to support us and not the other way around. I've spoken many a times being on panels where uh, we, we, we'll we have a conservative, a moderate, a left winger like myself on the panel. And we start talking about economic policies and uh, somebody would throw out a policy there. And the person on the conservative side, on the business side would say, but how would that affect business? The wrong question. The question should always be, how does that affect our life? How does that affect humanity? How does that affect the way we live? And we build businesses around what makes life better for us all. We have to start putting people first, humanity first, and not business first. When we put business first, we kill the environment. Because you know what? That's another problem. When we put business first, we lose our forest. When we put business first, all these things that, that makes us sustainable, all these things that make us, yeah, the word, happy, we put, we put last. It is time for us to really start believing in ourselves. It is time for us to start thinking. When that business person comes out and, and tells you, those are damn socialists trying to do X, Y, and Z. Remind them that what socialists are doing right now are propping up business. They've socialized business. Ask yourself why a, a student, a person who got a student loan and they're in dire straits with bills, they cannot get a bankruptcy. But a company who you can use bankruptcy to to get away from their bills. Companies have used bankruptcies to stiff myself out of monies they've owed me. Bankruptcy have had me have to pay back a company who paid me because they got bankrupted within a three-month window. Business first. Let's start thinking people first. From healthcare right back. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.